right? And you remember this little trick. Whatever the index is, that is the exponent for what goes back under here. So the index here is 4. So what's going right here? 6 to the 4th. Because it's a 4 this time, right? 6 to the 4th is a big number. It's, yeah, it's 1,296 times 5 is 6,480. Yeah. And this one, it's the cubed root of 7 times 5 to the 3rd, which is 125. 7 times 125, which is the cubed root of 708. 875. Boop, boop. Everybody cool? All right. Now, these next, whatever, uh, six questions, mix it all up. All right. Now, some weird things can happen. If you just follow steps, and I've already said this countless times you're gonna get confused in math you have to know what you're doing this question here is asking you for groups of how many factors two because there's no little number there right so if we take 105 and we break it down it ends in five so what can we automatically divide it by five and 21 and then we break 21 down into seven and three yes so this is the root of 3 times 5 times 7, yes? Are there any pairs there? No. So can you simplify it anymore? No. Multiply. multiply it by what? This is already done. So why did I put it there? Because I want you to know that when you're done you're done. You don't get to force the math because you think there's more math to do. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? That question is done. Usually, the bell rings at this point in the notes and I make this the homework. And every kid comes back the next day, oh, I couldn't do 5A, I didn't know. Well, what was going on with 5A? Or if I give it to them in class, they'll stare at it for like 15 minutes because like, there's no pairs, what do I do? Exactly. There's no pairs. So what do you do? Nothing, because it's done. Okay? Everybody with me? All right. And then they'll sit there and they'll actually break 196 down. Why do you not need to break 196 down? Because you've already memorized it, because I told you to memorize the first 20, right? And it's 14. Yeah, I know, right? And then this one, they'll look at this one and they'll break it all the way down. But it ends in two, so what should your first break be with a big number that's even? Two and, two and 216. And right there we get the stop. Why? Because we memorized our cube roots and the cube root of 216 is what? Six. six. So it's six cube root two. Let's say you don't have them memorized. Does it affect your ability to do this math? Right? Like, let's say you're not the kid that's got this memorized. Right? Are you going to get the right answer anyway? Yes, it's just going to take you a little bit longer. So if you're one of those people, and they exist, trust me. If you are one of those people that sits in math class, or any class for that matter, and there's kids that give answers really quickly and you feel like damn I'm not very smart don't feel that way because they've just memorized some shortcut that you don't have in your head yet it doesn't mean you don't know how to get there everybody understand because I used to be the kid that sat there how do you guys know all this math I don't know nothing but eventually it all works out in the end, okay? Uh, 3750, this one, man. 
a lot of kids, I watch them, they see 3750, they see that it ends in zero, and then they divide by two. None of you would do that with this question, would you? Of course not. What would you divide it by? Ten. Ten. Why? Yeah, but why does 10 automatically work? Because it ends in zero. 10 and 375. Now what are you going to break 375 up with? You're not going to... What? Why 5 Because it ends in 5. Oh, this was the big crap out. Oh, it's turning right off. Nice. Nice. I love quality. So you guys finish off D there while we wait. Because it'll be a while, as usual. And what do you have for an answer? Because you should have one by now. He waited patiently. Five, four, three, six. Three, eighty four. You're going to break it down. To, you're probably going to divide this one by 2, which is 2 and 192, 2 and 96, 2 and 48, 2 and 24. See how 2 is very powerful? 2 and 12, and it's going to take forever. 2 and 6, 2 and 3. And I need groups of how much? Two. One, two, three, eight, root six. And this one, tricky, tricky. Does anything change with how we deal with the 180? Of course not. Because we brought out three twos, two times two times two. 180 is, of course, 18 and 10, which is 9 and 2, and 2 and 5. There's a square root, and there's a group of 2. So what are we bringing out from the 9? A 3. A three. What are we bringing out from the 2s? Two. A 2. What was already out there? Negative 2. Negative 2. What math does a coefficient do? So what do I do with 3, 2, and negative 2? Multiply. Multiply to get negative 12 root, what did I leave there? Five. 5. And that's it. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no, there's one more page. I forgot. I'll leave it there for a second. Um, the next thing we're going to do is, is applicable to what we're talking about. But um, before we go on to it, I want to make sure I get this said. Um, simplifying these, right, like this. This is like um, the uh, factor trees that I was talking about a couple of days ago, right? Mrs. Bad Crumble taught you the factor trees, then you didn't use them for five years. That was like the very first step of something bigger. Well, do you have five years left in high school? 
No. So this is the very first step of something bigger. Right? So you, you got to be good at this if we're going forward. Everybody understand? This is not the end of it. This is the very first step. Okay? So this is tricky. I want you to put these on a number line. So the smallest number is where? Left. On the left, and the biggest number is to the right. Now, I'm also telling you not to use a calculator. Now, I have given you two ways that you can put these in the right order. There are two ways you could do it without using your calculator. Everybody try. Go. You guys, you're supposed to remind me. All that stuff I said there. So what weird thing is happening in H? There's a cube root with nothing out in front, right? So we're in a bit of trouble there. But does anything else change? Of course not. What's the first one, which I've used black ink for? That is the root of 5 times 36, right? which is the root of 5 times 36, which is the root of 180. What's the red one? What's the red one, or the second one, 2 root 13? What's it come out as? Manjo? Root 52. Nice. And the blue one. 4 times 3 squared, which is 4 times 9, which is? Which is? Root 36. And then we're stuck with that green one, which should come up on the screen any moment. We're still preparing to connect. And that green one we can't do anything with. It's the cubed root of 10. Yes? So... The black, the red, and the blue are easy, yes? Super easy, right? What's first? No, no, no. We're talking black, red, blue right now. The root 36, 3 root 4, right? So that's going to be down here. 3 root 4. And then, obviously, the red one at 2 root 13. And then the black one way out here at 6 root 5, right? Because... 180 is way bigger than these other ones, yeah? So now we're stuck with this one because it's cube root, not square root. So now we have to bring all of our math knowledge to the party because we can't, this is already an entire radical, isn't it? So we got to do that estimatey thing. That estimatey thing, the cubed root of 10, well, 8 as a cubed root, what is it? 2. Two. The next cubed root is 27, yes? So where is 10 closer to, 8 or 27? 8. So this value is just a little bit more than 2, isn't it? This value, what's the square root of 4? What's 3 times 2? 6. 2 is less than 6, isn't it? So obviously, I have to put my cube root of 10 to the left of this one. Does everybody follow me? Yeah. You want to be comfortable with both sides of a radical, right? Both the whole radical and the simplified radical. And you want to be able to deal with this. Understand how to just get a quick idea of what a value is worth before, because remember, this is only one single step, right? If this is, 
the only thing we're doing, no big deal. But if it's the first step of 20 steps and you punch that into your calculator wrong and you get an answer, you're all going to believe your calculator. And that's not your fault. You've been trained to do that. Because back in the day when Mrs. Bag Crumble in your old textbooks it always said estimate the answer. Did any of you ever do that? No, you grabbed your calculator and found the answer, which is wonderful if you know how to work your calculator, which you could do in grade six when it was add, subtract, multiply, and divide. This is grade 10, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. That's for preschoolers. You're going to use a hell of a lot more buttons on your calculator this year. And you're going to hit a ton of buttons in a row. It's going to give you a lot of opportunity to make a mistake. So the reason Mrs. Bag Crumble wanted you to estimate answers back in grade six when it was simple, like 13 times 22, why did she want you to estimate the answers? Why did she want you to say, well, that's pretty much 15 times 20, which is about 300. So when you go to your calculator and you find out that it is near 300, you would know you had done the right answer. This, super easy, right? But when your math looks like this, that, you better have an idea of where you're going before you start doing like 10 minutes of work, right? Because why would you do 10 minutes of work and get the answer totally wrong? Picking up what I'm putting down? So what, what Mrs. Bad Crumble should have done was say, the actual important thing here, kids, is the estimate, not the right answer. Because you were always going to get a calculator to get the right answer, weren't you? Even in grade six, right? That's not a math skill. That's Call of Duty 12, right? If you can make the headshot, your thumbs work. Great, you can work a calculator. Does that mean you know any math? No. So, I want you to get out of that habit that you started in grade six of never thinking about what you were doing and mashing on your calculator like a caveman. Sorry, a cave person. Okay? Estimate first. Have an idea of where you're going. Right? If I told you to drive to Disneyland... You wouldn't drive out of this building, turn left, and then turn left again. Because if you turn left again, you would be going towards Mission, and Disneyland is not that way. Disneyland is south. You should know where you're going before you start, right? The highway the whole way. Which highway? Uh, yeah, uh, I-5. Yeah. Okay, so get me to the I-5 from here. Yeah, go, to the border, the border's right there. go to the border, and it's right there. It's not. That's not I-5. That's Route 11. Uh, GPS. Oh, you GPS it. Excellent. All right. Well, actually, I guess I don't need this screen anymore because you people are going to work on page 34. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. As always, you can see that there is a crap ton of practicing there. Plus, you have the answers, right? If you can do the first four of them in number four, if you can do A, B, C, D, are E, F, and G, and H any different? No. So do you need to do all eight? No. But who decides if you actually know what you are doing? You do. If you do A and you're like, I think I'm right. And you check the answer and you're right. And then you B and then you're like, I'm pretty sure I'm right. You check the answer and you're right. Then you do C and you're like, I got this. And you check the answer and then you're right. And then you do D and you don't even need to check the answer because it's like, I already know. Do you need to do E, F, G, and H? No. When it comes closer to the test, would it be a good idea to go back and try a couple of the ones you skipped? 
because you thought you knew what you were doing? Yes. Does everybody understand? All right. So you're going to work on this page. You have 34 minutes in this class. That should be enough time to do enough of this page to feel comfortable. Yes? If it isn't, that becomes your homework. Okay? I'm going to come around. You owe me a score out of 20? Out of 20. I will take that from you today. Please notice, what is the next thing on my list after 1-6? A quiz. Will I give you that quiz before I've gone over this page? No, of course not. Because this page would be included in the quiz, and this is the first time you are trying this page, these type of questions, totally by yourself. Okay? So once we have gone over page uh, 34, which in your outline says page 218, then and only then would I feel comfortable giving you your quiz. When are we going to go over this? Tomorrow. Obviously tomorrow. Right? So at some time after you, we have talked about this, you can have that, that you can expect to get that quiz. I, I, go. Mr. Bussolini Hernandez Clark. Uh, let's see. Yes, you can, because you haven't gone at all this week. Go for it. Yes, Aaron. No, it is not like your phone. You do not roll over your minutes. 